Hey. Hi, Colin. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, good. Um. Should I let everybody in? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Hi, everyone. I heard we had eight people signed up, so we'll give everybody a couple minutes to show up. Do you have any questions before we get started and you want to send them to either me or Colin in a chat or to everyone in the chat box, you can do that. And if you have questions during the meeting and want to use the chat feature, you can do that as well. Uh, good question, Carolyn. Um, Colin, uh, we have, uh, Carolyn asked if we have to have a paid account to set up a Zoom meeting with family and friends. So Colin, since you're currently hosting the meeting, did you have to, we, 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 we tried several different things, but did you have to set up a paid account to finally be able to do the one that we're using with Zoom? No, so you, you don't need a paid subscription to, uh, to use zoom um you can have you can host uh calls up to uh 100 participants with the free subscription um the the one thing that has been a little weird about it is uh supposedly there's supposed to be a 45 minute cap on those uh call times for for anybody who doesn't have a paid subscription um, now, every time I've been on a call so far uh, and uh, we've hit that cap, um, we've ended up getting it extended uh, through Zoom. We get a little message saying, congratulations, your call has been extended. So I don't know that we'll be able to rely on that forever necessarily, but uh, for short calls with, uh, with folks, unless you have a really big family, as long as you're under 100, you should be, uh, you should be fine. Good, good first question. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, well, it looks like we got a few people here, so we'll get started. Um, if anybody has, again, any questions along the way, feel free to message me or Colin privately, or feel free to send it to everyone in the group. Um, Colin and Scott, our starting page that we usually discuss uh, pulled up, which is a great way of how to get to where the presentation's at if you haven't. Um, downloaded the presentation yet. So Colin will flip through the slides as we go, as we're talking about it, but if you'd like to have a version on your desktop or print it out for later, he's gonna show you where you can access it now. So if you go to mankittotext.com, uh, which is the Mankato Computer Technology website, mankittotext.com, you can also do a Google search for Mankato uh, Computer Technology and we should be the first result. But from the homepage here, um, if you just hover your mouse over the about section, you'll get a pop down menu uh, and you want to select presentations. And from there, uh, all of the presentations we have done uh, through Vine um, going back quite a while um, are on that page. And today's is going to be right there at the top. Um, 
So you, from there, you can just click on that. It'll open it up as a PDF. Um, and once you have it open in your browser, you can uh, download, print it, uh, whatever you would like to do uh, from there, or you can just scroll through it and view it in your browser. So I see we got a couple new people. Uh, as I was explaining this, just, just to recap, uh, this presentation is available on the Mankato Computer Technology website. It's at mankatotechs.com. If you hover over the About button, go down to Presentations, um, and then today's presentation will be listed at the top there. If you click on that, you'll get a PDF version. So uh, just to give everybody, I mean, a lot of very familiar faces here, but for anybody that's new, um, just to give you a quick uh, update of who I am and how we got started doing this. My name is Trevor Wagner. I work for Master Electric here in town. Um, been in Mankato about nine years. Uh, when I first moved to town, I knew I needed to find a computer store because I'm one of those people that's had a computer my whole life and uh, I know that they have problems and so you always want to find somewhere that you can trust that can help you and uh, upon my first visit to Mankato Computer Repair at the time, now Mankato Computer Technology, um, just found incredibly helpful guys and people got to know the owner, um, a lot of the salespeople and since then I've either bought or used them as a consultant for every piece of technology that we've had come in and out of our house. Um, they've been incredibly helpful. I, I love the conversation and the topics that the people that are, that work there. And, uh, one day when I was working for another job, I, I went to a customer who was having some computer problems, um, on an unrelated note and just asked me about them and told me that Mankato computer technology was coming out the next day to help them. So I swung by their shop on the way home and told them what was going on and what I thought they should do to fix it. And uh, they were they called me the next day and said, hey, you were right. You saved us a bunch of time when we got down there. And we just tried to figure out a way that we could um, use my skill set to help um, maybe lighten the load over at Mankato Computer Tech. So answer some basic questions and get people kind of started. Um, so like I said, I'm one of those people that's had a computer my whole life. Um, my inspiration for teaching this class is my mother who's uh, 20 years older than me. So she's about, she's gonna turn 65 here end of the June. And um, she's worked in uh, like the technology industry her whole life and uh, the telecommunications and has had a computer, the whole deal. <clears throat> and, um, but she still calls me like in the middle of the night with questions like, hey, my computer says click okay to continue. What do I need to do? And I was moving the thingamabob around the whatchamacallit and the whosamacallit and what did I click? and so I figured not everybody has a, uh, a son or a nephew that they can call in the middle of the night with their tech questions. And uh, we came up with this idea of maybe teaching classes. Um, and we started doing them just in community centers and for anybody. Um, but the Vine was nice enough to offer us a, a great meeting space and uh, really help us with curriculum and provides us an audience that um, can usually use technology help. So um, that's kind of how we got started and what we're aiming to do. Uh, the more of these I do, the more I find that all of the classes are interwoven together. And as much of a fan of technology as I am, I find that every class kind of has a, uh, a resolution that it's, a, it's sometimes it's a little easier just to, to do it the old way. So to, to reach out and make a phone call or to go visit a friend. Um, so you always have to be safe when you're using a computer. And if you're not really um, aware of what's going on, they can be a little dangerous. And we'll talk about that today. And, um, you know, just even last week, I'll give some, a quick couple anecdotes. Uh, just this last week, I got a message. I was, uh, coincidentally, I was out on the bike trail and I ran into a guy I know uh, who works at a business in town in Mankato that it's possible that we would do business together with. And uh, the next morning, I got an email from him that said, um, hey, we'd like you to submit an RFP or a request for purchase um, tomorrow by noon. And uh, it was like, click here to download the documents. So it was a business that we had done business with before, and it was a person that I had run into recently. So I was like, okay, like this seems like a good coincidence. Um, but as I opened the attachment, it told me to open OneNote, which different companies share their documents in different ways. So I was like, okay, open OneNote. 
and enter my password and that all looked legitimate. Looked legit. And then um, uh, when I went to open OneNote, it gave me a uh, click here to download the documents. And when I went to click here and download the documents, it took a target document that just didn't look right. It had some, some ugly keywords and some other things. And I was like, this just doesn't seem right. So I'm lucky enough that I, I have some friends at my computer technology and I sent Wes the link and said, hey man, can you take a look at this? And he was like, yeah, man, looks legit, especially if you just ran into this guy and that's somebody you would do business with, like, looks good to go. And then I was like, well, here, check out this hyperlink. And he was like, oh, yeah, never mind. Like, that looks bad. Don't open that. And so, you know, even two people that are very well versed in computers and technology, like at first glance, like the scammers and the hackers are getting better and better every day um, to make things look like uh, they're legit. Uh, I had another local business in Mankato call me and it was kind of the same thing where he had sent me an email. I called him to say, hey, it was, uh, this is probably a scam and it looks like you got hacked. And he was like, well, how, how much effort do I need to put into taking care of this? And so I called Wes and said, hey, I, you know, I got this other business owner and this is what's going on. He said, yeah, I would treat this as like a, you know, we've seen this going around town. I would consider this like a, a high level emergency. This person really needs to get in and reset their passwords and you know, look through their inboxes. And especially he was an older gentleman owns a business in town and his address book is probably full of what we would call vulnerable people um, that are going to be like, yeah, this guy sent me a link. So I should probably click on it. And uh, the link would take you to a bad spot and it wasn't good. So um, we're here to just try to give you some, some warnings about what can happen and, and how to avoid that, but hopefully how to use technology in a safe way. So um, today's topic is how to use the computer to communicate. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time on specifically designing slides that talk about Zoom or GoToMeeting or um, any of the variety of methods that you can use. Um, I know Colin and I worked really hard to figure out how we could do these in depth and what different kinds of meetings we could use, whether it was Microsoft Teams or Zoom or GoToMeeting or Google Meeting. So um, Zoom seemed like a really good platform and Colin has dove into it and done a really great job moderating these meetings and putting them on. Um, we have access and experience with a couple of the others. So if you have questions when we get to those points, we'd love to do it. But basically I just wanted to talk about um, like a, a overview picture of the different ways that you can use the computer to communicate, um, what the benefits of those are and what the consequences of those are. And like I said, a lot of them, a lot of this overlaps with our internet safety, how to use your computer for email, how to use your computer to communicate. Um, so I hope you start seeing some recurring trends. And if you have any questions along the way, like I said, feel free to ask. So uh, the biggest ways that you can use your computer to communicate are email. That's probably the, the most general one. We'll talk about some of the big servers and what exactly electronic mail is. Um, SMS, if you've ever used a cell phone, you might recognize those three letters. IRC, video chat, that's what we're doing today. And then the chat box or the text box that you can run in the side of the screen with your video chat is what we would call IRC or SMS. Uh, VOIP phones, we'll talk about those and how you can use the internet to replace your phone service if that's something you're interested in. Um, discussion forums is something that I'm relatively new to just trying to figure out. When I try to figure out new topics or information, it's really amazing all of the stuff that you can find on the internet. And then news groups is kind of an outdated way to find information and communicate on the internet, but um, they still exist, and if you subscribe to them in a good way, um, they're a little bit safer, I would say, than what you can run into by trying to dive into news groups within your social media. So uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the first one. The different types of communications are, there's a bunch that you can use, and there's um, a lot of different platforms, and the biggest thing is you have to have a computer, and you have to have a connection to the internet. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a connection at your house if you can have a public, if you have a mobile computer and you can have access to a public network somewhere else, you can um, do these things. So the Vine has public network, a lot of the coffee shops and town restaurants all have Wi-Fi and a password that you can use. The most common uh, way to do communication with your computer is going to be email or electronic mail. Uh, there's also the other ones that we talked about, but there's all kinds of different ways that people can communicate uh, with one another using a computer. So email, we've talked about 
whether you uh, you can write a letter, you can use a text editor, so you can spell check, which I do recommend. If uh, you happen to not be a phenomenal typer or speller, you can use spell check. Um, you can use other tools in your word processing service, the way uh, Microsoft has it all tied in together now with Outlook. Um, typing in an email looks a lot just like typing in Word, so you can use the thesaurus function, you can use underlining and uh, italics and change the fonts, all that fun stuff. And all you have to do is type in the email address of the other recipient and then click send. <clears throat> your letter or your email will be delivered almost instantaneously to a digital mailbox of the person that you sent it to. And you can save postage and they, it's a little faster and almost more trustworthy than your snail mail. The most popular email providers that were, uh, according to the website, compete.com are Yahoo, which is losing a little um, speed lately, but Hotmail and Gmail are the two big ones. And I would say Hotmail now is more replaced by Outlook. Um, but yeah, you, people, people, uh, people still have Hotmail.com uh, domain or email addresses, but uh, Microsoft uh, runs Hotmail, Live, and Outlook.com, and they all use the same interface online, which is a, an online version of the Outlook app. Yep. And Colin, in town, um, which ISP addresses or IP addresses would be would be using mostly? So uh, several internet service providers in town here also offer email. Uh, the the big local one is a lot of folks probably still have Hickory Tech email accounts. Um, of course, they're no longer a local company. They got purchased by one company, Inventus, and then got purchased by another big uh, national corporation called uh, Consolidated Communications. But they still use the at hickorytech.net uh, domain. Um, and then a lot of folks also have Charter, which also has uh, email service. Um, and then in rural and outlying areas, um, you might. Uh, come across you know, QuestNet, New Ulm Telco, if you're out in New Ulm. Um, there's a lot of, of smaller internet service providers, but most internet service providers uh, do also offer an email service uh, that's linked with your account. And that trend was sort of started in the days of America Online, if you all remember, uh, when you used to get those CDs or uh, discs in, for free in the mail, giving you, you know, 50 free hours and you would have a dial-up modem. Um, a big selling point was that they had internet access and email uh, all integrated into a single platform. So that's sort of uh, um, part of the evolution of, of internet service providers also provide an email. And then no matter what your email provider's name is, you can use software like Microsoft Outlook or um, different software that comes on your phone, depending on if you use an Apple phone or an Android phone, and you can type your email address into that and allow that software to manage your address. So um, just because you, you can use Outlook, but you don't have to have an Outlook address to use that. So. Um, you can use different software programs to help you organize and uh, set up your email and folders and stuff. You don't always just have to log into the website where your internet service provider puts your email. Sometimes you can have your phone or the program connect to that for you. So um, these are some acronyms that um, I usually rely on Colin to tell me what the acronyms stand for, but just to let you guys know, SMS stands for Short Messaging Services. Um, this is what, if you used to send text messages on your phone when you had to type in the key digits every time, um, this is how text messaging services originated. Um, but there are also messaging services on the internet that still use this technology. Um, it's used in chat software like Instant Messenger, Yahoo Messenger, or Google Talk, um, or even like the chat box that you have here on the screen. Um, IRC is called an internet relay chat. This is a lot different. Um, you can use an IRC client. This is probably a little, this is a lot over most common users' heads. Um, you use a client like Chatzilla or XChat to access an IRC channel, and what you'll find is it's a lot like a chat room. So an area where a bunch of people can go to, and instead of having a video chat, you would just have a um, text chat room. 
Uh, group chat is the default in these kind of rooms instead of one-to-one -one conversations like you would SMS, you're gonna send a message to one person usually, um, where IRC is more like a group room or chat. Um, video chat, which we're doing today, is a mixture of SMS, which is the messaging on the side, and um, VO, VOIP technology. So using software, these are the different packages that I was talking about that are available that you could possibly use. Um, Skype, um, Uvu, Google Talk, you can actually see the person via webcam when you talk face-to-face. -face. So if you have a good high-speed quality connection and a quality webcam, you can, uh, it's, it's like being there, kind of like being there in person. I still find that um, it, you guys have all done a fantastic job of muting your microphones. I, I would bet that you, this is not your first Zoom conference that you've had, but if you can just remember about three short months ago um, when people first started doing Zoom conference, um, they'd all have their microphones on and there'd be an echo or they would try to log in on their phone and on their computer at the same time and there'd be these echoes and delays and people are getting really good about it now. The etiquette's getting a lot better and people are a lot more informed about it. Um, you guys have all done a fantastic job, very well trained in your technology. Um, but I still find that there's a, a lag. I have a hard time with the social events that people try to put on through um, the different chats because I feel like really only one person can talk at a time and so when the other person cuts out it just makes that communication gap different so um, it seems to work really well if I call one of my good friends and we want to hang out and have maybe a couple of beverages and a conversation but as soon as I start feeling that there's four or five people in the room um, and people start to try to dominate the conversation it just blurs everybody else out so there are breakout rooms and other things that you can do um, in these video conferences to make it a little bit more convenient. But like Colin said, with the capability of getting up to 100 people at a time, uh, that just sounds stressful to me. But we can move on. Okay, VOIP phones, if you've heard of these or maybe you have one at home, this is a voice over internet protocol. So this is being able to use your phone over the internet, um, not like a cell phone, but um, they do have cell phone services that you can use on a cell phone that use the internet. Uh, you may see that option on your phone, especially a newer phone. But this is where you would actually plug in like your landline phone into a jack and it would help you use the internet to make phone calls. So instead of a traditional phone that plugs into the wall, a VOIP phone would plug into the computer and use a software to use the networks worldwide that we call the internet. So there's a ton of cost savings to this. And I don't know, most uh, internet providers nowadays are kind of throwing in the phone for free or it's only 20 bucks. But there's a lot of VOIPs that I think run, it's like unlimited calling for five or 10 bucks a month. Companies that you may have heard of that offer this service are Vonage, Intalk, Magic Jack, NetTalk. They've all offered services to residential and business customers for a fraction of the traditional cost. And it can be 50% lower than your um, regular phone bill. So if you want to check it out, um, you can look at a website like Chamber of Commerce. will list the different providers and how they're uh, how they're ranking. Colin, do you know VOIP providers in Mankato? Uh, there, I mean, Verizon does some. Charter does a little bit. Uh, so the big guys definitely. If you're looking for a, a Minnesota company, there's a, a company up in the cities called My, My Telepath that we work with, um, and they've been quite good. Um, this is something that a lot of businesses uh, do. I would I would wager that uh, the overwhelming majority of businesses that you would call in a given week have uh, VOIP as their phone solution. Um, and the really nice thing that uh, that makes it so easy for businesses is uh, you know there was a time when if you needed to set up forwarding rules or add an extension, uh, things like that, then you had to haul out a 50 page manual and and sort of poke away at different button combinations until you uh got it right through trial and error now it's all um you know clicking going to a website clicking pull down menus um that stuff is really easy the voicemail functionality is really easy um you can call in or out from your phone number from anywhere um or you can forward it to your cell phone uh you know so for for folks who, um, uh, in a residential setting, if you're if you decided that you want to cut the landline, but you still want to retain your own your old home phone number, this is a this is a good solution for that. 
Yeah, we use a really interesting hybrid here at our office that um, our receptionist has. It Literally, the phone calls come up on her computer screen like a big caller ID. Um, once the call is answered, she can click on a button of the names of any of us in the office, and it goes directly to our cell phone. Um, if there's no one around to answer and they leave a voicemail, it actually forwards an email to us with a recording of the voicemail. We download it as a file and listen to it, and then we can call the customer back. So um, it is actually pretty convenient. While sometimes I wish I just had an office phone to make calls from, um, the fact that I don't have to be in the office, especially like when we've been in this lockdown and quarantine and stuff, um, it's, it's proven very useful that um, we could have one person in the office and distribute all the phone calls out to everybody, whether they were in the office or not. So. Um, discussion forums. Colin is actually the reason behind why I've gotten into a couple of these discussion forums and just the information that's out there. So um, the big one that I think Colin's got me into is uh, Quora. I don't know if I'll pronounce that right, but um, it's just been a really interesting, if not entertaining, way to find answers to questions. And occasionally I find uh, specific information that I'm looking for. And uh, oddly enough, I find information that I never knew I was interested in. But um, discussion forums are places where you can go to find answers. Usually there's moderators. So there's people that will um, make sure that there's not anybody in there trying to sell things if they're not supposed to be selling them on those websites or um, keeping the topics relevant to what the topics are supposed to be about. Um, you can find these for almost any topic from troubleshooting car problems to seeking answers to common ailments. Um, a lot of times if you're typing into Google and you're typing a specific question, something like, how do I do this or how to do this? Um, and you end up seeing a bunch of what basically looks like a transcript of a bunch of emails. That's usually a discussion forum and you may not know that there's a moderator, um, but you can find good forums out there and they can be very helpful, um, especially if you're like a do-it-yourselfer and you're trying to figure out, you know, how to, um, Put together something you haven't done before or um, do something that might require a technical skill that you're not very familiar with or usually it's upgrading or, or making changes to something that uh, may be aftermarket uh, that you're not that people aren't always used to seeing so they'll you know tell you like oh yeah if you just use this size screw instead of that screw um, it goes right together or if you just sand a little bit of this off you know you can slide this right in there so um some of them are put together a little bit more professionally than others, but um, it's a unique way to do it that, um, one, you can either remain anonymous or post your information on there, usually. Sometimes you have to be a member to post on the websites, but it's a good way to read the information if you're looking to communicate that way. And um, I don't know, Colin, do you have anything else to say about the discussion forums? I know you like to use them as well. Um, I think, you know, the, when, when folks really uh, start to see their prevalence is when you start typing full uh, phrased questions into Google. Um, so if you type in, you know, why am I smelling antifreeze in my car or uh, is Pomona, California safe or, uh, you know, how do, I, how do I raise donkeys at my house? Um, <laughs> chances are your, your top three, four, maybe five uh, um, posts or, or results for that are going to be people who were asking the same question on uh, these discussion forums and then the, the sort of crowdsourced answers to those questions. Um, the one that Trevor... Uh, mentioned uh, Quora is is a really interesting one because people list their credentials, um, which is has become more common in, in a lot of different forums, but they they basically tell you why you are they are an expert in that area. And you can sort of, um, you know, if they're saying something really controversial, you can at least look them up on LinkedIn and make sure that they're they actually are a, a Cambridge fellow in economics and they're, they're not just saying that. Yeah, and sometimes you might, um, if you post a question on the thread, is what it's called when you when you put all those chats together, um, you may not, the moderator may not post your question on the thread directly, but they may respond to you. So I've had that happen as well, where I've asked a question um, on a thread and they didn't post my question and they didn't allow my question to be responded to by all of the members of the discussion forum, but 
the moderator of the forum provided a direct email to me and said, hey, this is where the solution to that is. Or sometimes they'll just guide you and say, hey, we've answered that question in a hundred other forums. So why don't you just go to this forum and they'll provide you a link with the answer to those questions. So that's one of those etiquette things that we talk about on social media is um, a lot of times people just ask the same questions over and over. And so if you follow a discussion forum closely, you're going to be like, oh, that was the topic a week ago. Like somebody needs to get with the times, but you know, you never know when somebody's clicking on it for the first time or reading it for the very first time. And they have something that they think is really new and exciting, but um, you're like, yeah, we already talked about that, you know, and go read somebody, go read our old forums, you know, get off this topic. So um, I find that with uh, TV shows a lot that people get really bored of uh, guessing what's going to happen in season four and people get kind of sick of like, we already talked about that. And if somebody asks that question again, I'm going to leave this forum. So, um, but they are a unique way. And I like what Colin said about Quora and, and reading uh, certified responses to uh, communicating. And if you have expertise in a field, um, it's an excellent opportunity for you to provide advice and information with other people, create a little network there. So. Trevor, it looks like uh, this might be the rare instance where we actually get booted uh, from oh. Zoom for the 40 minute. I just got a pop up saying that our, our meeting's going to end in 10 minutes if we don't do the upgrade. Um, oh. So I guess probably the best thing to do will be if, once this kicks everybody out, just to click on the link again, and we should be able to rejoin, I believe. Um, okay, I see it. I see a timer up there clicking. Uh, eight minute, eight twenty five left. So. All right, we'll try to get through a few more of these then, just in case anybody has trouble logging back in. So news groups are a, a bit older and they used to be called like an RSS feed, but you can subscribe to news groups. They're kind of like a mixture of a forum and a chat room. Um, people can use these to post information, pictures or files or even discussion topics. Other people might just skim them to look for information. They might look for job opportunities or ways to connect with friends. Um, you know, think about it as the pre-social networking of um, the internet age. So there, there's used to be ways, and I'm sure they still exist, but they're not as prevalent in your email program or on your browser um, that you could click in a corner and just say, I would like to subscribe to this web page. I would like to subscribe to this topic. I would like to subscribe to um, these message boards. And then that way you can get notifications of when that website would change. Um, or when information would pop up, like I said, especially if it's a job that you're looking for. Uh, Outlook is one of the programs that you can use to access newsgroup servers, um, or you can use a newsgroup client. So those are different ways that you can find information that you're looking for. They're not as popular as they used to be, but they are still available. And if it's a way that you're looking to gain information or you know there's a website that you would really like to follow, um, this is a really good way to do it. So we'll get into some of the advantages and disadvantages of communicating via computer. So um, there's, different, there's different benefits and consequences of each one. So in general, communication via the computer provides people who are not able to be in touch with each other. Um, the opportunity to stay in touch either through written words or live written conversation or like we're doing today, live visual conversation. There's lots of options. People are separated from loved ones, can't afford to, or are unable to travel. Um, you know, I haven't seen much about people being able to use this while they're in ICU or uh, during this whole COVID thing, but I'd imagine that if you're in quarantine or you're at the stay at home, you could communicate with other people. Um, but it's a, it, communication is a wonderful thing. It's a useful tool in personal and business settings. However, it's not a substitute for face-to-face -face conversations in all interactions, in all circumstances. Um, one of the main disadvantages of computer networking is that um, while it is a really great way to share information and all computers are linked together with this great wireless network, um, some organizations rely too heavily on it to get messages and information across. Um, it has benefited different businesses and individuals, but it doesn't come without drawbacks. And so some of the things that you have to be worried about are um, the stability of the network, or I know when the whole lockdown thing started, there was um, networks would get overwhelmed and they would crash. Um, like I said, we've had problems with Zoom before. The ones that we've run all here through the, uh, through the Vine for these classes have all gone off 
smooth, but today uh, we're running into that little hiccup where, hey, we've been able to do an hour and a half class, and today we're um, getting cut a little short. So um, there are downfalls, but you just need to learn uh, the parameters of the programs that you're using, um, and then hope that your network connection and the internet speed is good enough for everyone that's on there to, to use and to be able to facilitate. So. <clears throat> It does enhance communication and the availability of information. Um, with, if you have full access to the web, it allows you to share files, share information, share pictures. Um, this all would have been just impossible over the telephone or the telegraph or you know horseback messages with snail mail. Um, instant messaging allows you to talk in real time, send files to real people. Um, my favorite thing is sharing documents in real time now, even uh, just the advantages where you used to use Dropbox and you could drop a file and share it and somebody else could make changes to it and then if the next day you went in, you could see their changes. It would get confusing because you'd have all these different versions of it. Now, um, you can have the same document open in Microsoft or in Google and while the person that you're working with is making changes, you can see the changes that they're making in real time. Um, that's another thing that we use here at work. So um, it's caused great boom for businesses and ways to keep in touch with everybody. It also allows a lot of useful information, um, including traditional reference materials, encyclopedias, um, or code books for electricians or different tips of the trade, um, time, timely facts, news, current events, all that information is accessible and readily shareable. So you know, I've been on phone calls with people and we've been talking about something and we'll laugh and I'll take a picture of it and then text it to them while we're on the phone and say, hey, take a look at this picture. Um, like Colin's doing today with the presentation, he's got that running in the background while we're talking about information. So there's a lot of really cool ways to share information um, and it really can enhance your ability to communicate with people. So resource sharing, this is a great way to do it. Um, especially for large companies or large families that really need to produce huge numbers of resources to be shared by all the people. So if you need to get information out to a lot of people all at once, um, I can think in my life, uh, when our children were being born, we had two that had some really intense complications. And so just trying to keep everybody in touch uh, via electronic email and then later via social media um, was just fantastic to let people know where we're at, how things are going. Um, but since it involves computers, um, the resources that you want to get across can be shared by connecting to a computer network, but computer networks also have downfalls and they don't always work like you want them to. So that can be difficult too if you can't find a Wi-Fi signal or your computer's not working like it's supposed to that day. So file sharing gets easier with the network and the communications. So um, if you wanted to post a, a video to uh, your family members or share something that happened. Um, you wanna show pictures or make a collage. You wanna share a presentation. All these things can be done through uh, the computer to be able to communicate with other people. So it allows easier accessibility to share all of your files, with, um, access to all your stuff in the cloud. And it can save that time and effort of having to put all that stuff together, print it out, and it can make sharing more effective. It is flexible, so um, it gives you the opportunity to share as much or as little as you want. You can do you know, one-to-one -one text messaging, you can do a group text message, you can create a chat room, um, you can look at how other people are talking, you can engage with other people while they're talking, um, you can go to classes, you can attend virtually, um, you can attend recorded meetings. There's lots of different ways that you can do this. and. Um, people have accessibility to all the information they need to get and share. So you can choose to be as engaged or as disengaged as you want. Um, there's a lot of running jokes about, uh, you know, how people are communicating in business meetings, just listening and then waiting till the very end and just saying, okay, good meeting. That way they feel like they participated. So um, there's a ton of flexibility with this. And I think the next slide's disadvantages. Oh, inexpensive. Um, I was trying to get through it till we get to disadvantage. Maybe we can pick up there when the meeting restarts. So um, it is inexpensive relatively. Once you have the computer and the internet connection, you have access to a lot of different stuff. So um, computer networking uh, involves a, a whole network of computers. 
So you are relying on this instead of um, the efforts at hand. The way I like to talk about this one is my kids all had to 